Oh, I am incurably optimistic, and I'm always mocked for that, too. I, I, I guess it's probably because I sort of came of age in the 60s, when it seemed like things were really turning. Uh, it seemed like the winds were turning, as they say, and uh, I don't know, I've never lost that feeling that, th that uh, a lot is possible. And I think, and maybe this is just because of that uh, predisposition to see things uh, in a better light somehow, I tend to emphasize uh, how, how weak the system really has become. I think it's, it doesn't have, it has very little ideological base left. In the U.S., you have over two million people in prisons. Uh, when, when a, uh, I'm just using that as an example, but I think if you don't have any greater allegiance than that, and you have to fall back on coercion, if you have to fall back on brute force, you've kind of already lost the battle. And, and you know, in terms of the whole uh, speaking of ideology. I remember, uh, at my age, I certainly remember the American dream stuff, you know, the your kids will have it better than you, that's just an assumption, you know, it's getting better, there's just all these wonderful new developments. Nobody believes that anymore, and the system doesn't even bother trying to say it, it would just be, too, it's too laughable to say it. So, I mean, it just doesn't have any answers, it doesn't have any, any solutions that are cogent. I mean, you just look around and you can see that. So now, I think it's somewhat akin to locking people up now. It's more, this is where it's at. You better better get on board or you're, you lose. You're screwed. You, you just don't have a choice. It isn't that it's so attractive that you rush to join. You just, I think more and more people feel just trapped and, uh, without a choice in the matter. And so that when you get that kind of erosion of faith in, in the, the future of the system or the goodness of the system, uh, it shows a fragility there that we should ponder a little more. Sometimes we seem to feel so overpowered, and we are overpowered obviously, but, but our enemy is, is weakening, I think. It's, it's really, it's showing itself to be nothing but bad news. And so I think what has taken the place of the ideology of the dominant culture is technology. It, it now relies so much on technology. And even in terms of the social type questions, everything will somehow someday soon magically be uh, healed and solved and taken care of by technology. That's the last part of the ideological uh, armory. And it works to some degree. We're all held host hostage to it. We, we surely are. So it's not an illusion. But it's not the same as people actually believing in the different components of what is uh, entrapping us. And that's what we have to get past. And that's as old as civilization, by the way. You know, from the, from the first cities, which were walled cities, uh, you can't go out there. That's, it's very hazardous, it's dangerous nature. It's, uh, you'll get killed out there. It's a good thing you're safe in the city. We have the army, we have the temple, we have all this stuff and you're secure here. It's still saying the same thing, except it isn't secure here. It, it's, it's anything but secure. And, and really everybody knows it. There's so much anxiety in any developed country, you can cut it with a knife, and that shows another way of showing that no one's believing in the promises, no one feels they're protected. So, <coughs> I think, in a way, the road is open. It's much more open than we think to get somewhere against, uh, against the prevailing, uh, still uh, dominant uh, controls.